Praise the Lord, and welcome to Last Days Church, located in the city of Nashville, with yours truly, Pastor T.W. Bell and the Last Days Church family. Certainly, we bless the Lord today for this privilege and this opportunity that we have together to share with you in the word of the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. And as our intro was saying, it's time, it's time, it's time for us to worship. It's time for us to be grateful. It's time for us to give God praise. It's time for us to give God glory. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. I pray that you're encouraged, that you're motivated, that you're strengthened in Jesus' name. I pray that you're enthused. I pray that you know that victory is already yours in Jesus' name. And perhaps maybe you have not been victorious, but well, victory is on the way today in Jesus' name. We bless God for you, and we believe in God that God is going to touch you, strengthen you, encourage you, motivate you, and give you the victory in Jesus' name. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus' people. Victory is in our DNA in Jesus' name. That's why the Bible has declared that the weapon may form but it shall not prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us, we shall condemn it because it is our heritage as servants of the Lord. Amen. We bless God this morning in Jesus' name. So, amen. You know what time it is. Cut the TV off. Cut the radio off. Gather your family. Gather your loved ones. Send somebody a text or an email. Let them know that the last day's church is on and that Pastor Bell is preparing to deliver a preceding word, a word coming straight from the heart of God to penetrate your heart this morning in Jesus' name. We bless God. We bless God. We praise God in Jesus' name. And so, amen, we are going to turn our hearts towards prayer. And there is so much to pray for. There is so many people to pray for and so many things to pray for. And we are just praying in Jesus' name because we are still in the midst of a pandemic and First Lady Bell shared some disturbing news with me this morning. She she shared with me how a church, amen, lost several members because several people uh, got affected by COVID. And uh, several died in Jesus' name and several are recovering. And I don't even know the name of the church, but we're just praying that God would touch in that circumstance and in that situation. We understand that there is a variant there. But we serve an awesome God that can deliver in of various ways. He is not one-dimensional. Amen. He is a multi-dimensional God. And we're believing with you this morning that God is going to touch your family, that God is going to strengthen your family, that God is going to help you make the proper decision, and, and that you end up right in the middle of what his will is this morning in Jesus' name. So we're praying. We're praying for our president. We're praying for kings and, and, and those in authority. We're praying for leaders around the world in Jesus' name. Amen. We're just praying. We're praying for the families that stand in jeopardy. There are millions of families that stand in jeopardy today, amen, because the eviction uh, memorial has been moved out of the way. We're, and then so... Amen. People are able to be evicted right now. There are millions of people around the country, amen, that are, are, are on edge because they don't know what's going to transpire. We're going to believe that God is going to touch the hearts of men and that humanity will take preeminence over money. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're believing and we're touching and agreeing with those families. We're praying for that father and that mother that's trying to figure out a way to make it. We're praying for those children who've lost their mother or lost their father, that God will comfort them. And you know that God has a thing, amen, for people who are fatherless. Amen. He has a thing for them. And we just want to pray that as mother and father may be gone, that God would take them up, that God would move on their behalf in Jesus' name. Praying for all of those that are dealing with bereavement who've lost someone this past week, someone uh, who had to go to a funeral or had to memorialize someone that they love. We're praying that the God of comfort, the God of peace, that he would stretch out his hand and that he would minister to you and help you in the name of Jesus. We're just believing, amen, that good things are in store for the people of God. Amen. 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 My better days ain't behind me. My better days are in front of me. Somebody used to sing a song, better days are coming by and by. When I see my Savior way up in the sky, trouble will be over. Amen. I'll be home at last. Amen. Ever to rejoice. Amen. So we're looking forward, amen, to what God is doing. Amen. And what God is going to do. 
in Jesus' name. So with that said and done, gather your loved ones, get together, stretch out your hand. These are hands that believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. I'm thinking big. I'm thinking that God is going to bless, so I know he's going to blow my mind. Amen. According to the power that works in us, in Jesus' name, I know the power is working, and I know that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much in Jesus' name. And so this morning, we're just believing God that he's going to touch, that he's going to bless, that he is going to strengthen. And I know, I know there's, there's someone right now that says, Pastor, you may not understand where, I'm, where I am or what I'm feeling. Listen, listen, listen to me closely. We have a high priest who can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I might not know, but he knows. He understands. And so I'm believing in Jesus' name that he's going to meet you right where you are, at the point of your brokenness, at the point of your emptiness, at the point of your weakness. Your weakness is the springboard and the catalyst for his strength to be made perfect. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we bless God this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And so let's bow our heads and let's go before God in a word of prayer this morning in Jesus' name. And we set the atmosphere. We turn the spiritual thermostat to worship. We turn the spiritual thermostat to praise, to thanksgiving, to prayer. Come on. We bless God this morning. We lift him up. We magnify him. We exalt him. God, as we come before you this morning. Father, we first of all, we say thank you, hallelujah, for the multitude of blessing and the multitude of benefits that you have released on us and bestowed upon us, oh God. And I understand this morning why the psalmist said it, God, that if I had 10,000 tongues, uh, it wouldn't be enough to give you praise. It wouldn't be enough to give you glory. It wouldn't be enough to give you honor, God. But God, right now, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, we give you praise with the breath that we have. We give you praise from the fruit of our lips. We offer up unto you the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. God, you've been so good. You've done so much, and we can't hold our peace. You've been so good, and you've done so much, and we, we can't just, God, be quiet, oh God, because if we hold our peace according to your word, that the rocks would begin to cry out. But a rock can't praise you like I can. Hallelujah. That's why we declare that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That everything that has breath, worship you and adore you and lift you up mm, in the name of Jesus. Hey, God, thank you this morning. Hallelujah, we praise you. Hallelujah, we bless you. Hallelujah, we magnify you. Hallelujah, we lift you up. And God, right now, in Jesus' name, we give you praise in the face of the enemy. We let the enemy know that our God is not dead, that he is yet alive, oh God. And our God, we ask you now that you would arise and the enemy would be scattered. Our God, we ask you now, come in, oh God, and flood this place with your presence. Flood our dwellings, oh God, with your presence, oh God. Our God, right now, our God, let the anointing and let the Spirit of God, our God, move, oh God, this morning in this place, God, that we would not be the same, that we would not, ah, uh, God, go out the same way that we came in, oh God. But God, right now, we would leave out leaping, God, hallelujah, over walls and running through troops, oh God, because we've been animated by the power of your presence. Our God, we thank you this morning that it's already worked out. We thank you this morning that it's already done. So God, we recognize that we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We shout right now. We give you praise right now. We give you glory right now in the name of Jesus. And oh God, this morning, our God, as we come, we lift up our world, we lift up our country, God. We lift up our president, we lift up kings and prime ministers and those that are in authority. We lift up leaders that are making decisions, oh God, that have impact in our personal lives, oh God. Our God, in the name of Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name that their hearts would be turned towards humanity, that their hearts wouldn't be stuck on money and monetary things, but they would, God, right now, have the respect of life and the decency to choose life, God, 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We just believe you, God, that you're going to do it, that you're going to work it out, that you're going to strengthen, that you're going to touch, that you're going to bless, that somebody's going to be encouraged by the time we say amen, oh God. Father, we just believe in you now that you're still a miracle working God. We've seen you work miracles. We've seen you show your hand. We've seen you show up and show out. And we invite you to do it this morning. Our God, we recognize that vain is the help of man. We understand, God, in Jesus' name, that, that man can try, but you can do it, oh God. And so we appeal to your authority. We commit ourselves to your sovereignty, and we believe you this morning that you're doing, that you're touching, that you're blessing. And oh God, this morning in Jesus' name, we lift up the hearts of the families that are grieving this morning, the hearts of the families that are crying this morning because they've lost a loved one. Father, we just pray that you be the God of strength, the God of comfort, the God of peace, the God of mercy. God, we pray, God, that your presence would be felt and that God right now, your comforting hand, oh God, would, would caress their hearts, their souls, and their very minds this morning in Jesus. And we lift up the families, God, that are standing in jeopardy, that are standing, God, right now in an unsecure place because they don't know how they're going to pay their mortgage or pay their rent or they don't know how the way is going to be made. But God, right now, we ask you to speak to the ravens. We ask you to send supply according to your riches and according to your glory, oh God. And we just pray, God, that it be done this morning in Jesus. And we pray for healing in somebody's heart, healing in somebody's soul, healing in somebody's mind. We pray for that mother that don't know which way to turn, that father, God, that said this with seeing those children, God, right now that are scared, oh God, because they've lost their parents, oh God. Father, we know that you have, God, right now, a special place for those that are fatherless, for those that are motherless. God, we ask you to draw them closer to you with love and kindness and with tender mercies, oh God. And Lord, this morning in Jesus' name, anoint us as we step into your presence. Anoint us and let your anointing fill every space do it in the wonderful name of Jesus. God, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll worship you this morning in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we just thank you for what you're setting in motion. We thank you for what you're doing in this moment. We love you. We praise you. And we do adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Give God a praise. Somebody lift those hands. Come on, somebody bless him. Somebody honor him because he is worthy of praise. He is worthy of thanksgiving. Come on, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to bless God. I'm waiting on you to give God praise. I'm waiting on you to give God glory. Hallelujah. Because when, when the saints of God give God praise, when, 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 when the blood-washed believer give God's praise. What happens is, amen, our praise, amen, bombards the throne of God and the angelic beings back up because they don't understand the song that we have in our heart, that we've been redeemed, that we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. So Michael and, and amen, the angelic beings of God, they have to back up while the saints give God praise. Come on, somebody give God praise. Bombard the throne. Ah, God, water him with your worship. Let him know that you thank him, that you bless him, that you love him, that you lift him up, and that you're ready to worship him this morning. Oh, God, hallelujah. We bless God in Jesus' name. And hallelujah, we thank God for prayer. We thank God, amen, for the opportunity to, to shed our burdens and to cast them upon him because he cares for us. We thank God this morning in Jesus' name. And I want to take this opportunity to officially welcome you to the last stage church in the city of Nashville, Tennessee, where we are contending for the faith. We welcome you to worship. We welcome you to give God praise. We welcome you to give God glory. We welcome you into the liberty, the freedom that's found from being in God's presence. And in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So, amen. If you want to if shout, shout. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to cry, if you need to cry, cry. In Jesus' name, you are in a free place. You're in a place of worship this morning. And so we thank God. And because you thought enough 
about us, to invite us and welcome us into your space. I'm thinking enough about you and I make this promise to you that by the time we finish, that by the time we leave, your space is going to be better. Amen. Somebody going to say it's good for us to be where we are. So we welcome you to the last days church in Jesus' name. And oh my God, this morning in Jesus' name, I, I hope you got your worship clothes on. Let's slip into the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Let's slip into the garment of praise against the spirit of heaven. Let's worship right now with the praise team as the praise team comes and leads us into worship. Worth us with us this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody want God to have this his way? Come on, give God a praise if you want God to have his way. Because we need his spirit. We need his glory. We need him. We want God to have his way this morning in Jesus' name. I pray that that song blessed you. I pray that you had an, an opportunity to worship God. Amen. In song. Amen. And we bless God in Jesus' name. Amen. Because worship is a weapon. Amen. We thank God. And we want God to have his way. Amen. 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 So, amen. We bless God this morning in Jesus' name. And uh, we're very grateful for each and everything that God has done. Uh, and I'm very grateful in Jesus' name because I just celebrated a birthday. And I look back at my life and I'm 57 years old now. And and, and I, I'm so grateful because I remember, amen, uh, looking back at my life and all the things that I've been through and all the things that I uh, endured. And I recognize I shouldn't have made it to 27. Mm. But having obtained help from God, we continue to this day. And I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for how God has enriched my life. I always tell people that I'm not a rich man by the world standard. But you're not going to find a man richer than me. Because God has enriched my life spiritually, mentally, morally. And I thank God in Jesus' name. I'm so gracious and I thank God. And to each of you that sent a birthday wish, we thank God as well for you for loving on us and thinking about us in Jesus' name. And so, amen, we're going to turn our hearts towards the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to turn our hearts towards the word of God. And we understand that we can't make it. We can't live by bread alone. But we got to live by the words that come from the mouth of God, the preceding word that comes from God. And this morning, I want to share with you out of the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are going to look at something that God dropped in my heart in Jesus' name. And I, and, and I just want to try to share this with you in Jesus' name. It is my intent. It is my desire. It is my focal point, my aim, my goal, my objective. Amen is to be an oracle, is to be an extension of God's hand, an extension of God's voice. I want to be like John, a voice, a phone of one crying out in the wilderness in Jesus' name. And God has dropped this in my spirit, and I just want to share it with you this morning in Jesus' name. Luke chapter number 11 is where the word of God will be found today. And most of us who have been in church or most of us who have read our Bibles, we understand that this is the Lord's Prayer. But I want to grab an element of the Lord's Prayer and share with you what thus said the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. So we're going to look at Luke chapter number 11. And we're just going to highlight the second verse, Luke 11 and chapter number 2, uh, chapter 11, verse 2, excuse me. And it reads as thus, And he said unto them, them being his disciples, because they had asked him to teach us how to pray. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in Oronos, heaven. He says, Haggius, or hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Let me read that again. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. And this morning, I want to minister to you about kingdom Concepts. Kingdom concepts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kingdom concepts. When you grasp kingdom concepts, you're on your way. When you can grasp kingdom concepts, it is indicative that you are growing. When you grasp kingdom concepts, it denotes that you have expanded from being localized to being kingdomized. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Kingdom concepts. Father, now, in the name of Jesus, as this word prepares to go forth, 
Hallelujah. We pray, God, now that this word would go forth with power and demonstration of your spirit. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that it would penetrate the hearts and the minds of your people, that it would find good ground to land in, that it would bud and germinate and bring forth, that it would be as the water and the snow that waters the earth and causes it to bud and to bring forth. So, Father, now we rebuke the fowls of the air. We rebuke the spirit of the enemy that he will not steal this word in the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, now in Jesus' name that you anoint your vessel to articulate your thought that we might be able to grasp kingdom concepts. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Kingdom concepts this morning. Hallelujah. Kingdom concepts. Kingdom concepts. Broader concepts. Bigger concepts. Panoramic concepts. Hallelujah. God wants to expand you this morning and give you kingdom concepts in Jesus' name. And so we thank the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For our opportunity to be able to to share together in the word of God this morning. In Jesus, let the word of God embellish you. Let the Lord word of God enrich you. Let the word of God expand you this morning. Let the word of God show you yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank you. We thank the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. And so as I said, this is Jesus privately teaching his mathetes, his disciples, how to pray. Mm -hmm. And if you are ever going to get to the place where you become a resident of the kingdom, you're going to have to learn how to pray kingdom prayers. Mm -hmm. And so he begins to Give them instruction on how to pray, on how to approach the throne, how to engage our Father. And so, amen, he, he starts out and he begins to, to let them understand that when you pray, that first of all, we need to put reverence and we need to put the preeminence of God's person in the right place. Because oftentimes when we approach prayer, we think that we are the person or the one that should be preeminent. But in prayer, the Father has to be the preeminent figure. In prayer is where we practically learn how to decrease mm. that he might begin to increase. Mm. Prayer ought to swallow you up. Prayer is the, the platform by which you can lose yourself when new, you are no longer the only important and preeminent figure, but God is, the Father is. And so Jesus begins to teach them. He begins to let them understand that if you are going to pray right, you first of all got to acknowledge where all blessings come from. You got to acknowledge where is the source of your life. You got to acknowledge what is the thing, amen, that animates you? And what is the power, amen, that causes you to prevail? Make no mistake. It is your heavenly Father. Oh, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. And so uh, he says this, our Father, which art in heaven. And, and we got to understand something. Heaven overknows. That is the abode of God. But heaven Mm. is not large enough to contain him. That's just where his throne is. And so he says, our father which art in heaven, he, he says, Haggius or hallowed or holy be thy name. Because uh, I, I've, I've started to recognize that a lot of people have lost their reverence 
for the name of God. A lot of people have lost their reverence for who God is. There was such a time uh, where Israel and people of Hebrew descent decided that God's name was so holy that they wouldn't even pronounce it anymore. They reverenced his name. They, they lifted his name. They, they made it haggis. They hollowed it. And that's what we need to do today. Ah, God, if we're going to operate within kingdom concepts, we need to recognize who God is and how holy he is and that we cannot approach him any kind of way. We, we need to come humbly, but yet boldly to the throne of grace. Humbly is bowing down and being prostrate and acknowledging who he is and what he says and what he does. That's what being hallowed is all about. Amen. Recognizing who our God is. And so he says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. And so he introduces uh, the fundamental kingdom concept right here. Now, before I go further, let's, let's get an understanding of what a concept is. Now, kingdom, he, he uses the word basilea, kingdom. It is the realm where God is in control. It is the realm where God rules in. And so he says that kingdom come, that Basilea, the realm where you stay in control, the realm where God is the supreme authority and the supreme being, where God opinion is the only opinion that really matters. He says, that Basilea, that kingdom come. Now, this is a concept that we have to grasp. So, as we begin to look at what is a concept, what constitutes a concept, what is the makeup of a concept. And so, as we begin to look at it, a concept is something conceived in the mind. It is the thought and the notion. Now, let's, let's be clear. The kingdom concepts are the thoughts that are conceived in the mind of God. The kingdom concepts are the notions that God wants to see come to pass. Amen. So we, we got to grasp this also. A concept is an abstract or generic idea organized around a main idea or thing. Let me, let me say that again, that a concept is an abstract or generic idea that is organized around a main idea or a main theme. And so now, in order for us to get what this theme is, in order for us to grasp what this centralized idea is, let's look at what Jesus says to them in verse 2 again. And so after he has hallowed thy name. He says, thy kingdom come. And so this is the centralized thought. And then thy will be done. This is the main idea. This is the kingdom concept. Is that I want the realm where you rule to come. I want the realm where you're in control and you are sovereign to be made manifest. And then he says this, he says, thy will. He teaches us to pray for God's will. Thy philema, the Greek term for will, is what God proposes. It is God's intention. It is God's notion. Oh God, kingdom concept. He says, thy will be done. And, and what I, I want it to be so much done that now he uses the analogy of as it is in heaven, as it is in your presence, as it is around your throne, as it is before you. He says, I want thy will to be done uh, in earth 
as it is in heaven. So in other words, the centralized concept and the centralized theme is, is that I want the rule of God to be made manifest in the earthly realm in my life. Oh God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I, I want the will, the thelema, the intention, the proposal, the prophecies, the setting forth of what God has, amen, uh, uh, developed in his own part. Ah, my God, ah, God, to become manifest in my life. I want to move where God sees me moving in. I want to operate in, in the realm where God wants me to operate at. I want to be who God says that I am. Ah, but in order to do this, I've got to grasp kingdom concepts. And so we recognize and we we realize that in order for us to grab this centralized thought and this centralized thing, that something has to happen to us. We, we have to begin to grow. Uh, we have to begin, I've uh, got to think in a different realm. And, and so I want you to understand something that the centralized concept and the, the kingdom concept is that God's will would be done. Every day when I get up and when I leave the house and every day when I operate and function in my job, I'm, yes, I have to do my job. And yes, I have responsibilities and things that I got to get done. But the main thing in my heart is God, is that I want your will to be done. I, I, I want to be a vessel that I can be an extension of your kingdom, the realm where you rule in. And so when people encounter me, they encounter the kingdom. That when people talk to me, mm, I got to hear your voice. And mm, God, not just my voice. I, I want to get to the place where, where I become an extension of who you are. I got that I operate within kingdom concepts. Oh God, I wish somebody would just clap their hands and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Now, in order for us to grasp kingdom concepts, ah God, there are a few things have to happen. And, and ah God, I pray that I can get this across to you. I pray, amen, because it is my desire that you begin to think bigger than what you think, that you begin to see God in an equiminical sense, that you begin to see him globally and universally, that you grow to the perspective that you are no longer confined by the four blocks of your hood, that you are no longer confined by the area that you grew up, that you tap into. I've got the panoramic perspective of who God is and how broad his kingdom is. Oh, God, if, 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 if uh, heaven is his throne and if earth is his footstool, oh, God, how big is his kingdom? I want you to develop that thought and that, that mindset so that you begin to see God in a, in a much more realistic light, that you begin to develop and function and operate within kingdom concepts. So now, 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 Ah, God, in order for us to see this, I'd like to invite your attention to the book of John. And, and we got to look at what John says in chapter 3. Ah, God, and this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And as Jesus begins to minister, you all know the story in chapter 3 that he, uh, a man by the name of Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. And when people, amen, begin to see your life filled with kingdom concepts, they're going to do some Nicodemuses on you. They're going, to, they're going to come to you privately. When people begin to see your life is built upon kingdom concepts and kingdom principles, people are going to come to you as Nicodemus came privately to Jesus. And you know how the Bible says that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and he called him rabbi. He, he called him master, wonderful teacher. And, and he says, oh my God, we know there can't no man do the things that you do except God be with you. 
And I want somebody to know and understand that when you become a child of the kingdom, that when you become, our uh, God, a, a resident of the kingdom, that God is going to be with you. He's going to be with you when you go to the fire. He's going to be with you when you go to the flood. Hey, God, he's going to be with you in your trouble. He's going to be with you when you got to deal with stuff that seems like you can't deal with it. God is going to be your strength. God is going to be your help. But you got to operate within kingdom principles. But look at what Jesus shared with Amen Nicodemus. And we've got to glean this because let me say something to you. Because Nicodemus, amen, he was a ruler of the Jews. He, he was an educated man. He had insight. He was religious. But I, I have to tell you this. Mm. Everybody that's religious cannot grasp kingdom principles. Everybody that is religious cannot grasp kingdom concepts. And so I will give you this example. So Jesus begins to interact with Nicodemus and Jesus blows him off of his religious pedestal. How oh my God, because he probably thought that he was okay. He probably thought uh, that he was all right because he was a ruler of the Jews. But look at what Jesus said to him in verse three. Jesus answered and said unto him, verily, verily, or truly, truly, absolutely, I say unto thee that except a man is born again, oh my God, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so uh, one of the first prerequisites of kingdom concepts is that you've got to be born again to be able to see them. You've got to be born again. That means that something has to happen to you from a spiritual perspective, a moral perspective, amen, from an intellectual perspective. Something has to happen to you in order for you to be able to see, amen, kingdom concepts, to be able to see the general ideas and the notions that God has for his people and for his church. And and so, as the story continues, Nicodemus validates what I just said. Being a man religious does not give you spiritual insight to kingdom concepts. So, amen. Jesus, amen, said this to this, and Nicodemus responded with a natural response. Look at what Nicodemus said. Nicodemus, oh God, said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Ah, my God, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb uh, and be born? See, Nicodemus, even though he was educated, even though he was intellectual, even though he had honed his cognitive powers and his mental skills, and he was a man of insight, it went over his head because a natural man cannot receive kingdom concepts. A natural man cannot see, see them. As the Bible says that they sound foolish to him. So Nicodemus, even though he was educated and had insight and uh, was religious, uh, it went right over his head because kingdom concepts, amen, uh, only people that have been born again can see them. Now look at what Jesus said to them. So listen to this, listen to this. You got to be born to be able to see it. And then uh, Jesus answered it, verily, uh, verily, oh my God, mm. He said, except a man is born of the water and the spirit, oh my God, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Jesus brought it out to him. He let him understand that that which is natural is natural, but that which is spiritual is spiritual. He says, a man has to be born again uh, of the water, baptized him. He has to be born again of the spirit. Amen. He has to be filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to cry out, of a father. He has to be born again to be able to enter into kingdom concepts. Oh God. Oh God. So he says, oh my God. Hallelujah. Verse 6. He says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He says, marvel not. He uses the word thamazu. Don't be blew away. Don't marvel. Oh God. Don't, don't, don't let it take you off your stand that I say to you, 
that you must be born again. Marvel not, church goer, that you must be born again. That going to church is not enough. Marvel not, preacher, that you must be born again. How God, that knowing the word of God is not enough. How God, that you got to be able to see the kingdom because you can't enter into what you cannot see. Let, uh, God, kingdom concepts. Uh, so he begins to tell him that you got to be born again. Uh, God, that you got to allow the spirit of God, uh, God, to envelop you, to endow you. You've got to allow the spirit of God to animate you, uh, my God, so that you can get kingdom concept. Let me throw something in. Hallelujah. I want you to document this. Even though Jesus spent three and a half years <clears throat> with the disciples, even though he showed them the mysteries of the kingdom and he shared with them things that kings and priests and angels have desired to look into. Notice that he told them something. He told them when he got ready to leave to go to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued with power from on high. I got, don't do nothing till you get power, till you get born again. Don't do nothing until I send the promise of my father. And the reason is, is because until you receive the promise of the father, kingdom concepts will go right over your head. Kingdom concepts you won't be able to grasp. Hmm. So now, ah uh, God, so as Jesus comes on the scene and Jesus begins to teach his disciples kingdom concepts. If you'll notice in Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, he begins to teach a series. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. But he begins to teach a series of sayings that he says that it has been said unto you, or it has been taught unto you. And then he says, but I say unto you. Because what happens is, in order for you to, to grasp new concepts, sometimes what you've been in indoctrinated to believe has to be moved out the way or either fulfilled. It has to be moved out the way because as long as you think in that paradigm, you cannot see the concept of the new things that he's trying to teach you. As long as you are locked in that old way of thinking, that old way of doing things, you cannot see the concepts and the kingdom that God is trying to share with you. So look at what he says in Matthew. Mm. He says this in Matthew after he had told them, ah, my God, hallelujah, that some things had to be different. He said with them in Matthew chapter number five and the 17th verse, and I bring this out for a reason. He says, think not, mm, ah, don't think, hallelujah, that I've come, what? to destroy the law, because sometimes when you start to bring about new concepts, people think that you're trying to destroy what they already know. No, no, no. So he said this, don't think, don't look this on my think that I've come, how huh, God, to destroy the law. He says, but I am come, or the prophets. He says, but I am come, how huh, God, to fulfill it. But sometimes, in order to fulfill the law, you got to introduce a different concept because the law pointed to a concept of righteousness. The law pointed to the concept of God's goodness, but the law was weak through the flesh in that it could not fulfill the righteousness that the law pointed to. So God now is getting ready to do something different in your life through the spirit that the righteousness of the law might be made manifest in us who walk not after the flesh, oh God, but walk after the spirit. I'm getting ready to give you a new concept down on the inside. Ah, my God. So, ah, God, this is why he told Nicodemus, marvel not that you must be born again. And so, as, as, he, as he says that, He's not going to destroy it, that he's going to fulfill it. Something has to happen because as he begins to fulfill, oh God, you got to start thinking a different way. You got to start functioning in a different way. You got to start operating in a different realm. And this is why he says this in Romans chapter number 12. Ah, oh my God, look at what he says. And I know that you know it. Ah, oh God, I know that you understand it, but look at this. He says in Romans chapter 12 and the second verse, 
He says, be not conformed soon or forced. Don't take on the shape and the form and the ideology and the concepts and the notion and the thoughts of the world. He says, be not conformed. Don't take on their thought pattern. Don't take on their shape. Don't take on their ideology. Don't take on what they say is okay. You got to take on kingdom concept. So he says, be not conformed to the world, the cosmos, uh, but be transformed, metamorpho. Uh, God, be transformed, go through a transformation by the anachinesis, by the renewing of your mind. Mm. God wants to take you into a renewed mind. He wants to renew your mind so that you can understand new concepts, that you can understand new thoughts, that you can understand new notions, that you can see what God wants to do. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the anachinesis of your mind, the renovation, that you might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I go up because when you allow God to renew your mind, now you can show other people what's acceptable. You can show other people what's good. You can show other people what is the perfect will of God. Because understand, the central concept, the central theme is that God's will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I God and so I, God, I, I got to do this. I got to move as I almost come to a close. There are too many of us that are praying and we want the kingdom of God to be made manifest. We want the kingdom of God to be seen externally. But I got news for you. The kingdom of God cannot be seen externally until the kingdom of God is seen internally. Oh God, the kingdom of God cannot be manifest or seen externally until it is seen internally. And so, mm, and so I want you to grasp something. I want you to get something, child of God, as I, amen, teach you about kingdom concepts. I want you to understand this. Ah, God, and so, hallelujah. So one of them asked Jesus a question in Luke chapter 17 and the 20th verse. They asked Jesus a question, and the question was, and, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said that the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So it's not going to be seen outwardly. It's not going to be natural. And too many people are looking for the kingdom of God to be made naturally, but the kingdom of God is being developed inwardly. Oh God, hallelujah, kingdom concept. And so then he says in 21, he says, neither shall they say, lo, here or lo, there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Ah, my God. Now, this brings about a deeper concept. You're looking for it on the outside. But is the kingdom being developed is the inside? Is God's, is God's will being done in you? Is God's basileum, his realm of control, his realm of influence, his sphere of influence, is it inside of you? This is the bigger question. Uh, God, are, are you still like a horse or a mule that has to have a bit in his mouth? Can God speak to you? Uh, God, and you move. Do you understand kingdom concepts on the inside? Mm. So many people are looking for a manifestation on the outside. Uh, but the kingdom has to be developed on the inside. And I rejoice right now because I'm not so much just looking for it on the outside. On the outside, that's in God's time. On the inside is in your time, oh God. And if you don't get it on the inside, you might not partake it of the outside, on the outside. Oh my God, this is solid. I want you to develop kingdom, kingdom uh, God concepts. I want you to get kingdom principles down in your mind, down in your spirit. Ah, my God, I got you, I got to get you to see something. Ah, God, ah, God. So as, as I look at this, ah, John chapter number 18, Jesus shares something when he is being cross-examined, when he is being, amen, examined. And, and I want you to understand that when people examine you, will they see kingdom concepts or will they see worldly concepts? Look at what Jesus said 
amen, before Pilate. Look at what Jesus shared with him. Ah, God, John, ah, God, chapter number 18, and around the 36th verse. Look at what Jesus said unto Pilate. Ah, God. Jesus answered, amen, Pilate in verse 36 of chapter 18. <clears throat> he said, my kingdom, the basilea, the realm where I rule, mm, he said, is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I would not be delivered unto you. So people of God, people that understand kingdom concept, we understand that we don't fight, but I want you to recognize we don't fight in a natural realm. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. So Jesus was letting Pilate understand, you couldn't have any power over me because if I wanted to, I could call legions of angels, but that's not how I fight. Ah, oh my God. Somebody say, this is how I fight my battle. I don't learn how to fight with kingdom concept. I don't learn how to love my enemy. I don't learn how to pray. I don't learn how to lean on God. And you got to understand this, that those of us who are in the kingdom, who are in the church, we got to recognize something. That kingdom concepts are bigger than church concepts. Just write this down. John, excuse me, Luke chapter 9. And I want you to look at the 49th verse through the 56th verse. Read it in your own time. But I want you to understand something. Kingdom concepts are bigger than church concepts. Kingdom concepts are bigger than your cliques. Kingdom concepts are bigger than your crew. Kingdom concepts are God concepts. So I want you to recognize this. Just look at that in your time, and I want to share two quick things with you. The disciples ran into someone casting out devils. And because he wasn't with them, <clears throat> they forbade him to stop. We got to learn that sometimes everybody ain't going to be with you, but that don't mean that they're against you. Jesus told them that they that are not uh, against us are for us. And then they wouldn't receive some people, some disciples. They wouldn't receive them and they wouldn't receive Jesus. And guess what? Some of the disciples asked Jesus, should we call down fire and burn them up? Jesus said, y'all are out of order. You don't, you don't understand kingdom concepts. Because you got to recognize something. Jesus let them understand that the Son of Man did not come to destroy lives, but to save them. So kingdom concepts always has as a central idea the opportunity to save someone. So I pray that you get it. I pray that you grab it. And I pray that you operate within kingdom concepts. I love you today. <clears throat> and I pray that if we have blessed you, that you would reciprocate that blessing. That you would sow into the last day's ministry. We're getting ready to open back up. We're getting things done. We're almost there. But so into last stage ministry. Go to Givelify and look for last stage church in the city of Nashville. Elder T.W. Bell, you'll see it. You can follow the instructions. Amen. Download the application and so into last stage church. You're sowing into good ground. You're sowing into kingdom ground. You're sowing into kingdom concepts. Sow that $50 seed, that $500 seed, the $1,000 seed, whatever it is. If God has blessed you, bless him back according to his riches and glory. He's blessed you. Now bless back according to your riches and glory. As he increases me, I increase what I give. I thank God. I love God. And I pray that you've been blessed today. And as always, myself and First Lady Dr. Tony Bell, we miss you. We love you. And we're looking forward to seeing you. But I want you to understand something. Let's operate with kingdom concepts.